On today's World Insight, the summer Davos resumed in the Chinese city of Tianjin after four years. We speak to the president of the World Economic Forum, Borge Brende, on what China can offer to a world economy in need. Hello, I'm Tian Wei, and welcome to World Insight. Today, I'm in Tianjin. Standing here overlooking the Congress Center of the annual meeting of the new champions, otherwise known as the Summer Doubles. The last meeting of Summer Doubles was held in person back in the year 2019, and now the meeting is coming back to China. With the theme focusing on entrepreneurship, the driving force of the global economy, the forum opens Tuesday. Summer Davos, since its inception in 2007, has been a great occasion to assess the latest developments in the world, particularly new technologies and innovations. This year, 1,500 global leaders from around 90 countries and regions are gathering, bringing with them the best new practices, new ideas, and fresh inspirations. Chinese Premier Li Qiang is to speak at the opening ceremony after a successful trip engaging with business communities in Europe. The World Economic Forum is an international organization based in Geneva. Its annual meeting takes place in Davos, Switzerland, whilst the summer Davos has been held in China. The World Economic Forum is a non-profit foundation based in Geneva, Switzerland. The idea was conceived by German professor Klaus Schwab in 1971. The forum is best known for its annual meeting at the end of January in a mountain resort in Davos. The meeting brings together thousands of top businessmen, international political leaders, economists, celebrities and journalists to discuss the most pressing issues facing the world. In 2007, the foundation established the annual meeting of the new champions, also called Summer Davos. The gathering is held annually in China and alternating between Dalian and Tianjin. The forum brings together 1,500 influential top players of what the foundation calls global growth companies, primarily from rapidly growing emerging countries such as China, India, Russia, Mexico and Brazil. The meeting also engages with the next generation of global leaders from fast-growing regions and competitive cities, as well as technology pioneers from around the globe. The history between WEF and China can be traced back to 1979, when the European Management Forum, which is the WEF's former name, officially set up a cooperative relationship with the Chinese government in Beijing. Two years later, the forum co-hosted the first international symposium on business management with the China Enterprise Confederation. From 1983, China started to send delegations to the forum. These groups include high-level representatives from both the political arena and business community. On the eve of the forum, I talked to Borge Brande, president of the World Economic Forum. He said when it comes to the future of the world, he strongly recommends that global growth needs cooperation and coordination. He said, we all can get a better picture of the world today by looking at facts rather than being dragged apart by rhetoric. Here's my conversation with Borgi Brandy. Mr. President, what a pleasure to see you in China. Thank you so much. It's great to be back in China. I feel very energized. Mr. President, this is like uh, re-energizing in a way. All the possible uh, stakeholders into the summer doubles. It's not just a resuming, it's actually a relearning process. Tell me more about that. No, thank you so much and you're so right. Uh, it is so good to be back uh, in China. Also seeing China now uh, growing again uh, post-COVID. Uh, we know that uh, the world is a bit struggling uh, in general. Uh, it's not the easiest time. 
the global growth is expected to 2.8% this year. It's lower than last year. But there are some silver linings. Asia is one. Asia is 70% of the global growth this year. And China probably 35, 36 of this. But uh, of course, China's economy is also a product of the global economy. So you're also seeing that uh, China uh, grew uh, quite substantially. And we're also seeing no measures being taken from the government to secure growth also in uh, uh, the months to come. Now, earlier at the annual meeting in Davos, I remember very well you told me about your New Year resolution to see a less economically and geopolitically fragmented world. Well, in the middle of the year, <laughs> Mr. President, how has your New Year resolution come true so far? So uh, I at least uh, think it was a hope for my side. <laughs> Uh, if I were uh, to decide, I, I think uh, there will be more cooperation and uh, less uh, confrontation and fragmentation. But the World Economic Forum is trying to build trust and that's why we're also back now with Summer Davos and Tianjin because we believe that uh, the big players in the world uh, should uh, cooperate more. And uh, we think it's sending a strong signal that we're back in China, that we have the new premier with the key ministers also coming here. And we see a lot of business people from all the world, mm -hmm. but also uh, civil society, young global leaders, startups, uh, tech companies, uh, unicorns. So uh, this will be uh, the place uh, to meet now and also to show that there are hope, there are hope uh, for the future and we should go back to a win-win world and not like beggar thy neighbor world but prosper your neighbor world. Earlier I was sitting in some, in some uh, discussions you had with the young global leaders of the World Economic Forum. By the way, you always have been devoting so much energy and time to interact with the younger population. But having said that though, you talk about two important ideas. One is we shouldn't throw out the bathwater together with the baby. You are suggesting about what we have achieved at this point in ret retrospect. You also talk about the philosophy in China uh, with a traditional proverb of slow is fast, quote unquote. Um, a lot of philosophical thoughts in it. I know today we want immediate solutions to everything, but tell me more about why you are so keen on these two rather philosophical ideas. So um, I think uh, we have to build uh, on the past successes and not uh, throw the baby out with the bathwater. And I try to remind the young global leaders that are there, if you look at the 30 last years, we have done really well in the world. We doubled the global GDP. We have gone from 40% uh, living in extreme poverty to 10%. And uh, we should also be aware that um, this recipe uh, should we not leave uh, this recipe is built on a win-win thinking that trade and investment has been the engine of this growth that has resulted in a unparalleled poverty eradication uh, globally. And then uh, the proverb uh, of um, uh, slow is fast is also the best of uh, Chinese culture that you should not repair what is not broken and also if you want some results you should not uh, haste uh, too much. You should also think through and you should move in a considerate way. And I think today in the time of social media and confrontations there is uh, too uh, many uh, things that are brought up that doesn't really 
solve the structural and fundamental challenges that uh, we are facing. Foster entrepreneurship, reinvigorate innovation, transition into green development, or among a diverse range of topics at this year's Summer Davos. Faced with an increasingly complicated geopolitical landscape and frequent financial volatility, policymakers and leading industry leaders share their insights on the most pressing global issues. How to unleash the full potential of small and medium-sized enterprises? How to reap the benefit of AI while mitigating its risks? How to reboot the global economy in a post-pandemic era towards a sustainable future for all? Join us for a special coverage of the 14th Annual Meeting of the New Champions, only on CGTN. Images may appear to be identical, but looks can be deceiving. The difference is not always obvious. It has to be discovered. There are always different sides to a story. We put the focus on the details. To see more, to understand better. CGTN. See the difference. Interestingly, also quoted a proverb in the West that you will never be able to make omelette without the eggs. You were describing, of course, at the time of a situation you tried to work within your own country at the time when you were serving as foreign minister to uh, deal with some of the tough issues and have to deal with it head on. Eventually, of course, your administration benefited from it. I just don't want to describe all the details, but that is also the other side the other side of the coin, isn't it? That we have to, on the one hand, patient and philosophical, incremental. On the other hand, face the challenges head on, not to try to hide in the sand. With all the new technologies coming now, for example, artificial uh, intelligence is changing the world so fast. And uh, the future of manufacturing is changing. Uh, the jobs are also changing. So if you try to like hold back and not reform, you can end up like in a Kodak moment. Remember, Kodak uh, was one of the largest companies in the world in the 90s, and then they decided that they were not going to go into digital uh, photographies. They were sticking with the old film, and then the company uh, did really not uh, survive. If you look at, for example, the 10 companies in the world today with the highest market cap, four or five of them did not exist 20 years ago. So that's why I think also that uh, you have to be willing to reform and that's why I'm also using this um, kind of proverb that you have to uh, crush some eggs to make an omelette. So you have to be willing uh, to also take on some changes, make your economy uh, competitive, because competitiveness is the basis for increased increased productivity, mm -hmm. and increased pro uh, productivity is really prosperity. Mm -hmm. This time, it is being held in China. The summer Davos resumed again. So, what do you see as the general picture of the Chinese economy? Remember, over the past the decade when summer doubles being held in China, Chinese economy has always been the driving force of the region and even the world. Now it is still looking at the percentage, but how to look at the realities and the potential of the Chinese economy, Mr. President? Chinese economy has uh, still huge potential. And uh, the global economy is growing 2.8% this year. Uh, China is almost double that, at least uh, more than 4%. So China is still growing faster uh, than most economies in the world. Uh, I think that uh, the Chinese government is also now taking steps to make sure that this growth continues. We have seen that on the lowering of the interest rates. Uh, I also see that there are new reforms um, taking 
uh, place. And China has a strong role in many areas. For example, when it comes to the new renewables, uh, solar, wind, a fast growing area. We even see now on uh, the electrical cars that uh, China is already in the forefront here. Mm -hmm. If you look at um, electrical cars being uh, produced in China, uh, they are taking more and more market share. Mm -hmm. And we also see the speed train, and in many areas uh, China is leading. But of course China also has to continue the economic reforms in a situation where you're producing higher up in the, the value chain. So uh, as in all advanced economies, uh, there are challenges. Where do you see, Mr. President, from the forum's perspective, that China's role should be and can be in terms of being the driving force of the global economy at this critical stage? China is already um, a driving force. Uh, because uh, maybe as much as 36% uh, mm. of the global growth this year will come from China. Asia, almost 70%. So China is already at the forefront, but to stay there, you always have to continue with the reforms to produce higher up in the value chain. And it's right that uh, also uh, China now put a lot of emphasis on continuation of investments. And we saw the Premier's visit to Germany and France was uh, successful in this respect. There's also uh, a lot of uh, new production being planned in China. Here in Tianjin, we know that Airbus is a big operator already. And I think they're preparing now a second production line for airplanes mm -hmm. here in uh, Tianjin. So if you read the international media, you can maybe sometimes get the uh, impression that there is less trade between the US and China and less investments. But the fact that the, even last year, the trade between US and China increased with 1.2%. Mm -hmm. So there is a political, political rhetoric and what the press is reporting and then there's the reality on the ground. But, so, but we have to secure uh, that the geopolitical tension is not leading to a situation where we're seeing the global economies decoupling, because that will lead to less growth and less prosperity. Mm -hmm. So in, in a way, we are at the crossroads here, and I hope that this summer doubles resume now in Tianjin uh, this year, and we will go to Dalian, uh, next year also sends a strong signal that the global community is so interested in China mm -hmm. and also um, we have been uh, very much supported by the global companies that are part of the World Economic Forum mm -hmm. to be back here with Summer Davos and we have more than 1500 participants from all over the world and I think that also shows um, the interest in the Chinese economy and I think a lot of um, the people coming and participants are also now very interested to hear from uh, the new premier and also many of uh, the new ministers uh, in China, their aspirations for the future. Talking about the new premier, as you said, uh, Mr. President, he made a successful trip in Europe, interacting with French, German, as well as uh, business community from other parts of the continent. How do you see uh, our forum, which is one based in Geneva on the European continent, uh, though it is an international forum, uh, trying to bring the two continents closer, particularly Europe and China? So uh, we also saw in uh, Davos, winter Davos, yes, uh, the annual meeting. Yeah, annual meeting, that there was uh, great interest uh, in Europe for the Chinese delegation, was then uh, headed by Vice Premier uh, Li He, 
And he also sent a strong message uh, from China about China being open for investments, open for trade and collaboration. And it's interesting to see that the relationship between Europe and China is uh, very good. Mm -hmm. uh, of course, there is areas where maybe uh, they don't see exactly the same way, but overall, I think there is trust and we also see that on the economic development side. There's more investments and there is a pretty good development uh, in the trade between uh, Europe and uh, China. China being the second largest economy in the world, but EU is still the largest market in the world. So I hope that um, this collaboration can send a signal also to the rest of the world that um, even if there is competition, even if you disagree on some topics, there's still an opportunity to collaborate. The uh, risking, that was the word being used a lot during the Chinese Premier's visit to Europe, uh, but at the same time, China uh, hopes it's not going to be a uh, word games. Uh, rather de-risking or de-linking, decoupling, but rather to be able to still uh, work with this important stakeholders. Your take on uh, rhetorics versus realities, once again, in terms of China-Europe uh, interactions. It's true that there is a lot of uh, rhetoric, especially between the G2, China and the US, but uh, I think Secretary Blinken's visit now uh, to Beijing uh, was positive. I think there is also a possibility for another meeting between uh, President Xi Jinping and also President uh, Biden. I think the collaboration between uh, Europe and, and China um, is um, in a, has a good momentum. And the reality is that even if the rhetoric can be a little bit tough, um, the trade is continuing and even increasing. Mm -hmm. So based on the COVID experiences, there will be some nearshoring, but that nearshoring is also then uh, related to supply chain. So not just in time, but also just in, in, in case. Mm -hmm. And that might be making uh, sense. But the whole uh, notion of decoupling does not make sense because if you decouple and stop trading with each other and you go into a situation with just French shoring, mm -hmm. that will have huge economic impact for all stakeholders. Uh, IMF, the International, uh, International Monetary Fund, mm -hmm. has quantified this and they said a decoupling in the global economy can leave us in a situation where you shave off 7% of the global GDP. That's like a depression yeah. that we have to avoid. And that's why we're trying also to build increased trust um, at the World Economic Forum mm -hmm. by being here now in Tianjin for the summer Davos. Also next year's winter Davos, the annual meeting of the World Economic Forum uh, in Davos, will be looking at how we can continue to work together and build trust. And of course, we also hope for great Chinese participation mm -hmm. uh, next year. We have had that in the past, and especially we were very pleased with uh, President Xi Jinping's participation and his historic speech in 2017, where he uh, then called for multilateral cooperation. We are all in the same boat. We cannot fix the climate change. We cannot be prepared for new uh, pandemics uh, if we don't work together. None of this travel with passports. Climate, uh, greenhouse gases and CO2 don't travel with a passport. Uh, potential pandemics don't travel with a passport. We are all in the same boat and we have to act accordingly and we have to collaborate. That's a win-win thinking. Uh, tomorrow will be the Chinese Premier's first speech ever in front of an international forum here uh, taking place in China. So, uh, Mr. President, what's your expectation in terms of interactions? And also, in that way, how is it going to reflect the forum's role 
in a multipolar world? So um, we have high expectations uh, to uh, the primary speech. Uh, I haven't seen the speech, but uh, uh, I guess he will underline that China is open for international cooperation. I think he will underline also uh, the importance of uh, trade and investments to build uh, a sustainable global economy. I think he will also send messages to the international community, business community that is here, that uh, China is a good country to invest in. And he will also, in your primary meet with the uh, global CEOs uh, after his speech and have a direct interaction with them where they can raise questions. Mm -hmm. And I think that is also sending a strong message that the premier is spending one and a half day here yeah. at the summer uh, Davos. Yeah. So very pleased. Uh, with his participation. Mr. President, it's such a pleasure to see you again. And I guess our conversation will continue again at the annual forum once again next year. Thank you so much and welcome to the snow. It's very warm in <laughs> Tianjin. So it will be, I think there's like 50 degrees difference between yes. Tianjin and, and, and Winter Davos. That's my interview with President of the World Economic Forum on the upcoming Summer Davos in Tianjin. This week, I will be here at the annual meeting of the new champions, talking to movers and shakers, innovative voices, while bringing you the latest insights. On behalf of my team in Tianjin and in Beijing, thank you and see you tomorrow. <laughs>